Hello everybody, uh, this is going to be a video talking about using our calculators with row operations. Uh, so hopefully we have some kind of TI-84, TI-83, some kind of graphing calculator from Texas Instruments. Um, if you do have a Casio uh, <coughs> calculator, you can still do this, but the uh, entries and everything else is going to be slightly different here. Um, what I'll be doing in this video is you scroll down to week four, you can see at the very, very, very bottom, we have the simplex method and calculator directions. So clicking on that, uh, we see the kind of flow chart here. Um, and then also we see this, the simplex method on the TI-8384. And so what we're gonna have to do is, um, for using our calculator, we have to do a, a number of different steps. But I wanna really ramp, uh, kind of emphasize here the calculator is not just going to spit out your answer, you actually have to do quite a bit of work in terms of row operations, um, identifying them correctly, and entering them correctly. And so hopefully this video will go through and talk about that on our calculators, um, using this as a backup as well. So you have this already, um, so if you ever kind of want to go back to this, you have it available, you can download this, have it for your notes, or you know use it during your quiz, whatever you'd like. But again, remember, we will have to write down our row operations um, at some point, so make sure we remember that. At this point, I hope the kind of from the question itself to the Slack variables, to the initial system, to the initial simplex tableau is makes a lot of sense, right? We kind of know how to do this at this point. Um, the pivot element is this number with the kind of greatest negative indicator on the bottom row. And then, so it's gonna be in this column, and then we take the ratio of the constant divided by each of those entries. Um, not the bottom row entries and not any negative or zero entries. So once we do that for this one, we get 32 over two is 16, 84 over four is 22. Um, and then we see, oh yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, uh, this two has the lowest ratio right here. So this is our pivot element. And so a whole pivot operation are all the things you do to get this to be a one and everything else to be a zero. So let's kind of go back a second. We need to enter this into our calculator first. If we haven't used our calculator much, this screen right here, if we ever hit like second quit, this is our home screen. This is where we're gonna be doing most of our computations. And so the very first thing you should probably do whenever starting any of these questions is to hit second so we can see like the face buttons all have like little names on them, but also there's these little blue and green little icons right above them. It's kind of like this shift button, right? Or alt or control on our calculator or on our keyboard. To get to them, um, for the blue ones, we have to hit the second and to get to the green ones, we hit alpha. So we're gonna hit the second button and we're gonna go all the way down and to the right, this little MEM button, right? So the plus, if we hit that blue shift or that second, and hit it, we go to this memory screen. It's no longer just plus. We're gonna go down to reset, hit enter. We're gonna do all RAM, enter, and down to reset, enter. This is kind of the RAM clear screen. This is really what I'm looking for whenever I kind of start a new question, and then I can just hit second quit like normal and go back to the home screen. All right, so that's clearing out the memory. To enter this matrix uh, into our calculator, our calculator reads it as a matrix. We call these tableaus because they're not really talking about equations, rather inequalities. Anyway, we gotta get to this little matrix area in our calculator. So we hit the second button, matrix. And we can see there's a couple of options at the top. We have names of these matrices, which we'll be using. If we hit the right arrow, we'll see math. Hit the right arrow again, we see edit. And now we can kind of edit any of these named matrices. I'm gonna edit the first one, A, hit enter. And I have to tell it what kind of, how many rows and how many columns does this matrix have in order to kind of fill this thing out. So on here we can see we have three rows and one, two, three, four, five, six columns. I know uh, in Newton they sometimes don't show this P column here and just kind of show this column as the, uh, the P values. But it is a good idea to kind of keep this P as this basic variable, right? We'll talk about that more in a second. Um, and yeah, uh, I'll, that's all I'll say. So to enter this, we just kind of enter in each number. So this one is one, obviously. And notice it has this little one, one. This is the row and column that we're at. So if I hit one and then enter, it'll move over to one, two. 
and I kind of keep on doing this. I get 2, uh, 1, 0, 0, 32. If I hit enter here, it's going to go back over like a kind of like a typewriter, just back to the start. 3, 4, 0, 1, 0, 84. And lastly, negative 50. Do be careful, use the negative button here. Do not use the subtract button. Uh, they are two different things. Your calculator reads as two different things, and you may get some errors that way. Uh, negative 80, 0, 0, 1, and 0. As always, with any of these videos, pause if you need a moment to kind of catch up, go back, you know, whatever you need to do. All right, so I've entered this matrix, and so I'm gonna hit second quit to go back to that home screen, and now I can start thinking about, well, how do I make this two a one and everything else zero? So if you've been following kind of my recommendations on how to pr perform row operations, you're kind of used to this idea that we're gonna multiply this row by a number to make this thing a one. And here it's already telling you, yeah, we multiply row one by a half to get the new row one. So we can do this by hitting second matrix, go over to math, and all this stuff here doesn't really help us, but if we just hit up once, it'll kind of go back to the bottom, and now we have these different row operations. These last two is what I would recommend us using pretty consistently. Um, and, you know, my people are not very imaginative. If it says times row, you can imagine I'm multiplying a row by a number, times row plus, I'm multiplying a row by a number, and adding it to a different row to get some other row. So <clears throat> while that might make sense, what goes where, right? What do we enter when? So we're gonna do the times row because I need to do this one half row one to the new row one. And we can see this, the little uh, sheet here has this times row as this stuff here. Um, so if we hit times row, I'm gonna enter in one divided by two because the first number we enter is the thing we're multiplying by, right? Or the, the constant number anyway, it's the one half. The second thing that's not so clear in here is the matrix. Like which of these matrices am I using? Our calculator is only, you know, as, as smart as we tell it to be. So if we hit second matrix, we gotta make sure to enter in that matrix A in this next spot, hit comma, and we have to tell it which row to multiply by, in this case one. End parentheses, enter, and we see a whole new uh, matrix here, and we can see, oh yeah, that two now becomes a one. So this is where I kind of differ from the directions here. I always recommend students use this little stow button, the store button, to then store your answer into second matrix, the next matrix B. I think by now we recognize if we make one small mistake at one point, it can really cascade into all the other kind of tableaus and row operations we've done. Um, <clears throat> I recommend storing it in the next matrix every single time you do a row operation. I know it gets a little uh, you know, clunky and, and maybe over time we might not have to use that, but for the first few of these questions, I really recommend storing that new answer into B. Okay, so that's a one and we wanna get this four to be a zero and this negative 80 to be a zero. And with this, making this a one is really helpful because now we can just say, oh, well, I just multiply this by the opposite of this and add these two things. And we can see down here, that's exactly what was done, right? Negative four row one plus row two is the new row two, and 80 row one plus row three is the new row three. And we can see here we have the calculator entries, but we've got to make sure to do these successively. We can't just do them all at once because we need to perform each of these row operations one at a time. So here I'm still at, you can hit clear, quit if you'd like to get this whole uh, kind of cleared out. But I'm just gonna hit second matrix. I'm gonna go over to math, hit up, and times row plus. So times row plus, again, I need to enter the number I wanna multiply. Negative four, comma. Second matrix, go down to B now because that's the new matrix. I have to use the, the newest one that I have, comma. And then I have to enter in the row I'm multiplying by, and then the row I'm adding to and then uh, uh, replacing. So one comma two, parentheses, enter. And we can see here it did the job I wanted, right? So I hit that, get that zero, great. I hit store, second matrix, C, enter. There we go. So now this is stored in matrix C. 
And again, you can clear this out if you want. It's fine because I stored that matrix C right in here. If for whatever reason, uh, so one more row operations to do and then I'll get to something else. Uh, if I had second matrix, go over to math, go up to times row plus, I now need to multiply uh, row th one by 80 and then add it to row three. So 80 second matrix C now, because that's the newest matrix, comma, one, comma, three, parentheses. And again, once more into the reach store, second matrix D. So we can see that, oh yeah, this did exactly the job that I wanted. And uh, what I would really recommend is students writing out this full tableau. Um, we did what's called one pivot operation. One pivot operation is one whole set of a row operations to get this pivot element to be a one and everything else to be a zero. So in performing one pivot, this is what we get for the next tableau. We're not done, right? We need a second pivot operation because we can see here, hey, this bottom row still has a negative indicator of negative 10. And to see that, to see which of these I do, I have to kind of use these little arrow buttons that's indicating it here to kind of go over and say, oh, this one's 16 and this one's 20. So 16 divided by a half is actually 32, 20 over one, well, that's 20. So that is gonna be our pivot element. <clears throat> um, if for whatever reason, this matrix is too big and you can't see everything, if you go to second matrix, go over to edit, and now go to four, it goes back to this kind of, you know, more exploded screen where we can actually kind of scroll through all of them. Sometimes uh, on the home screen, it's a little wonky and you can't see everything, but that's okay. Well, great, we don't have to do anything with this second row because that's already a one. All I have to do is kind of do these next row operations. And because it's a one, I don't have to think very hard about what I need to multiply by, right? We can see here negative one half row two plus row one is the new row one. Second matrix over to math, up to plus, uh, times row plus. You might wanna pause this video, try to enter in this on your own. I put in negative 0 0.5, comma, second matrix, D, comma, 2, comma, 1. Great. Did exactly what I wanted to. Um, hit second, so excuse me, hit store, second matrix, E. And now I'm going to do second matrix, math, times 0 plus. And maybe pause, see if you can do this on your own. 10 comma, second matrix, E comma, two comma, three. All right, so again, I'm gonna store this once more into second matrix F just to make sure I have it. Um, there can be weird things where if you get your answer and then you do something else, you can't go back to this and actually look at it, so always store that answer. But we can see here, yeah, um, I don't have any more negative indicators. I see that the value for x1 here happens here at this second row, so that's gonna be 20. For the second uh, x2, it's gonna be one so there, so six. And for this, we have 1,480. This is the final tableau, right? This is saying, hey, I have everything, no more negative uh, indicators on the bottom row. This is it, I am done. We need to do two pivot operations because we need to identify the pivot element once for the first uh, initial tableau, again for that second tableau, and now we get the final tableau. Now this process can be different, right? This process can absolutely be, you know, it could take a lot longer to do this. And so <clears throat> that's what this kind of loop is talking about, right? This loop is talking about a pivot operation. Uh, and so when we see that, we have to do this whole kind of piece here. Um, in general, we'll need at least one, but maybe two or even three, maybe even four of them, uh, you know, is something that we're, we may be required to do. Um, all right, I think the last things I'll say about these questions, they take a long time. 
They take an incredibly long time. No for the quiz though, I'm not gonna be asking all of it, right, one of these full questions. I'll be asking for like a piece of these things, right? Um, give me say an initial solution. Uh, for each of these pivot tableaus, or excuse me, for each of these tableaus, we have kind of an inbuilt solution if we think about the non-basic variables being zero. So anything without a single one and all zeros is zero. A basic variable, a one with all zeros, is just equal to that constant number uh, where that one is in that row. So in this case, we have a solution of 0, 0, 32, 84, 0. And it makes sense, this doesn't maximize our p-value, right? This is p-value is 0, so I actually need to do something to say, hey, is going to be greater. We can see here for the initial pivot, for the first pivot that we do, we get a huge increase in p. And that makes sense for reasons about, you know, this being the greatest negative indicator, in the initial equation, it had the biggest effect, right? So it's going to be the biggest negative when we look at this kind of full equation here. Uh, and then we look at the other ones to kind of fill in the gaps, as it were, and we see, yeah, okay, you know, for this next one, we get an increase of 200, and that makes sense. It's going to be less than 1,000, you know, less than 1,280. Um, and I think the last thing I'll say in using any technology we should be writing stuff down still. We should never be doing all of the work in our calculator. We should still be actually writing things out and making sure we know what these row operations are. For some of the Zoom student, Zoom student sessions, um, you can see here, uh, me and the student kind of talked a, quite a bit about uh, how to do these row operations for this question here, right? We actually kind of went through the different matrix uh, commands and storing and kind of going back and forth like to pause this feel free to do that um, but I would really recommend students writing out this kind of the initial tableaus your row operations and then the next tableau write out that out in full and kind of just write these by themselves and that way you can kind of see oh I know what kind of row operations to do here all right this is a bit long I know it's 17 minutes but hopefully this is helpful if you have any questions comments concerns let me know and I'll talk to you soon